So I'm, I'm Second Lieutenant Robert McFatridge, and I'm with the Headquarters Battalion of the 169th Field Artillery Brigade. I'm a 13 Alpha, a Field Artillery Officer. Currently, I'm waiting for an assignment down at the batteries to be a platoon leader, but prior to that, I was a Fire Direction Officer with the Hawaii National Guard. So I grew up in Hawaii for most of my life. My grandmother and grandfather were both descendants of Japanese who had already emigrated to Hawaii at the time. It was already part of the United States. And they were called what's called Sansei, which is third generation. And so they're the third generation Japanese that came to Hawaii. And my great grandmother is actually from mainland Japan. She was studying to be a nurse at the time and her and her two brothers were also studying in medicine. But because, you know, this is uh, Pre-World War II, so the economy is not doing all that great. So my grandmother had volunteered to put herself on the marriage list at the time. And my great-grandfather, who had owned a plantation, was looking to marry. So the great-great-grandparents had set up a marriage interview. She accepted and she married in Hawaii. You know, it's a lot like the, uh, if you've ever seen the movie about the picture brides, it was kind of like that, except this one, they had a little bit more choice. So this is prior to um, the state of Hawaii actually becoming a part of the United States and a territory. And during the Great Depression, my great grandfather actually lost his plantation during that time. So they had quite some tough times. They're actually still living in the house that was once a plantation house. And they've since uh, expanded and upgraded it, to say the least, they have Wi-Fi. And um, you know, uh, one of the things I liked about the culture was that, you know, that putting the needs of others, you know, before your own, I mean, it, it was it was a lot for, you know, my great grandmother to sacrifice medical school essentially in order to support the family. And, you know, it was kind of a sense of honor that she she did that. So yeah, a few generations later, you know, my my mom she jokes sometimes with the with the tourists that would come by, you know, she'll sit down on the bench and she'll point up at the pine or the coconut tree and say, oh, I wonder if the pineapples are ripe yet. And, you know, of course, tourists, not knowing any better, <laughs> would look up and, and wonder, oh, the pineapples. <laughs> they, they, all they see is the dull plantation can. So, you know, we had some fun times. So my family doesn't really celebrate Asian American Month. Or, you know, it's been more of a tradition, actually, to celebrate the kind of the New Year's in a Japanese fashion. We actually have a, uh, I'm not sure the Japanese term, but it's, it's essentially a, a stone bowl and we pound rice with it to make mochi. And that's kind of like the, the New Year's to put the red rice bean on the inside and give it out to the family. And it's, we do a lot of kind of Hawaiian Japanese culture that grew together over the years because, you know, for a lot, long, long time, you know, they've been kind of intermarrying, intermixing and merging cultures. So we do a lot of, you know, say fiestas <laughs> throughout the year, we all get together and, you know, kind of have our little party. It's been getting a little quiet lately since all the kids have been growing up. You know, I, w I was one of the middle ones and I'm already in my 30s, so they need new kids to uh, run around and pick up eggs <laughs> inside my grandmother's garden. But it it's been mostly a, kind of a, a blend of American, Hawaiian, Japanese mix of cultural traditions. And almost the most purest one is uh, pounding mochi at the beginning of the year.